The name of this book I'm reviewing today is perhaps one you'd never think you'd hear said, yet it is exactly what it says on the cover, The Anatomical Guide to Lovecraftian Horrors. To get it out of the way quickly, yes, there is some connection to the previous book that I reviewed called Sandy Peterson's Field Guide to Lovecraftian Horrors. While written by different people, having different artists and released by different publishers, Sandy Peterson, the creator of the Call of Cthulhu RPG and also a Doom video game designer, the original Doom that is, is connected with the creation of both, though this book today is written and illustrated by Ecuadorian artist and writer Luis Merlo. I will compare the two books later on in the review. So what is the book about? It is essentially a biological study of the various entities of the Lovecraft mythos and reads like the field notes of some biologist who found out too much that was good for him. It explains how they exist as biological beings basically. The entities listed in this book might surprise you. They tend to lean towards the more normal creatures of the mythos if normal can even be used to describe them. So you won't see Yogg-Sothoth, Azathoth, Shabnigarath and their class of entities. Their biology is simply too incomprehensible. Instead you will see creatures like Deep Ones, Elder Things, Migos, Zoogs, the Lithians and many others. These creatures are more like regular living entities rather than some thing beyond comprehension like Azathoth is. In fact the roster presented in this book is really extensive and not all are original creations of Lovecraft I believe or rather that they if they are they are more greatly expanded on in other literature. I like that. The mythos is a living thing and continued on after Lovecraft's death and many writers have added their own creations. All entries to this anatomical guide are interesting and bizarre entities in their own right and perhaps will inspire you to go and invent your own eldritch abomination to contribute to the mythos. All entries here are treated the same so I can use one as an example and you can see how every creature will be presented. Let's look at an elder thing. The physical dimensions of the elder thing is presented with its height and weight along with its nature and habitat. Habitat of course is self-explanatory and nature seems to be like what kind of creature it is. There is also a size comparison next to an average male human being. Further there is an anatomical sketch, a visual dissection of the elder thing as well. The creator of this book chose to highlight any unique features of the creatures. So for example here, how an elder thing could fly. Regarding text, you can see the anatomical features, biology, ecology, the development and some explorer's notes on the creature. One quirk I liked a lot about the book and which carries on from the field guide is keeping up the gimmick that the creator, in this case Louis Merlo, rarely came into contact with these entities and that they are real and that he examined them. In other words, the book presents itself as if it could be an actual book from the fictional universe of the mythos. I like that and it gives the book a little bit of a tongue-in-cheek feeling but it's still a serious subject matter which is covered. As for the topic of biology, well, I'm no professional. I took it in school, like many of you, and it was one of my better subjects so with those limited credentials I can say that all the explanations given as to how Amigo may fly or how a night gaunt can see or sense without a face made logical sense to me. Quality control. As always, in a book review, it is necessary to point out the physical quality of the book. If you own the field guide, then I can say this is basically the same in terms of form, size and quality. If you don't have that book as a reference, then in short the anatomical guide is a quality book with a solid hardcover, glossy full color pages and no printing errors or such things to be found. The binding seems solid and I don't doubt it was well made. It's a good sign since it's a visual book so you'll be wanting to page through it quite often. Similarities. Looking at this book, one does recall a previous book titled Sandy Peterson's Field Guide to Lovecraftian Horrors. A question I was asked earlier on in this year is whether one who owns the field guide would have enough reason to also own the anatomical guide since it's at a quick glance there is a similarity. Frankly, I believe there is reason enough to own both. The field guide gives a solid general overview of the various creatures of the mythos and does a very brief touch on the biological aspects of a creature. For example, the feeding habits of a flying polyp. The anatomical guide however focuses totally on the biological aspects of the creatures of the mythos and looks at how these creatures function as living entities. That's a big difference. The field guide does include all the major entities such as Yogg-Sothoth as well, whereas the anatomical guide excludes them. But let's be honest, in keeping with the gimmick that Lewis Merlo, the book's creator, rarely did dissect and study the entities listed, how the hell can you expect him to go and dissect Yogg-Sothoth? But apart from these exceptions, all the entities from the field guide seem to be in the anatomical guide, and that's good. 
So in short, I feel there is enough justification for owning both, and I wonder if there might be a third, quote unquote, guide to Lovecraftian horrors in the future to make this book series a trilogy. It would be very cool. So, who is this book for? This is definitely a book for the serious Lovecraft fan, the type who is really into the mythos and doesn't just take things as face value and then just moves on. I guess if you clicked on this video then that's probably you. However, for the casual Lovecraft fan, if there is such a person, I think some of the content would go over their heads. Or perhaps it would draw them in and make them more curious to learn more about the mythos. Personally, I enjoyed it very much. So in conclusion, this is a very unique book. I've never seen any serious attempts to understand how these bizarre creatures exist and function. Yeah, you could say, oh, it's going to ruin some of the mystery or something like this, but, well, a deep one, for example, is a living entity. It's a real living entity. Well, real in the mythos, but it lives, it breathes, it needs to eat, it reproduces, just like a human, basically. So, being that humans are always curious to figure out how things work and function, it makes sense that such a book exists. If you like the idea of trying to figure out how entities in the mythos exist, I urge you to also go over to Sandy Peterson's YouTube channel. He has a number of videos which look at exactly the subject matter. I would also just like to say quickly for the sake of clarity with you guys that while I did get this book for free, I am not being paid to make this video nor was I really obliged to make it either. I would only review things that I think are positive additions to the mythos and things that true fans would really like. This is one book that I think fills those criteria. Lewis Merlo in conjunction with Peterson Games has created a very unique and interesting book and had I not gotten it I would have happily have bought it as well. So if you think this is a book for you I will leave the links in the video description and in a pinned comment where you can pick up the anatomical guide. I'll also leave some links where you can get the field guide if you don't have that book already. I hope you enjoyed this video and if so consider your support with a simple thumbs up that boosts it and gets it to be seen more and helps defeat the YouTube algorithm. I'd appreciate that. Anyway that's all I have to say for this one. I hope you guys are all well and it's good to be making videos after my trip to Russia. Anyway I'll see you guys later. Cheers.